We often hear modern men described as an NPC, an individual who accepts what they are told and doesn't question the flaws of mainstream institutions. They follow the status quo by buying into a social system that tells them what to do and how to live. Go to school, get a degree, pay your taxes, buy the newest iPhone. This person is unconcerned with seeking deeper truth and understanding of the world around them. They have turned into machines defined by their economic contributions and consumption of material goods. Like the narrator in Fight Club, their worth and value is tied to their possessions. They express themselves by how they consume as opposed to how they create. Their personality is defined by the clothes they wear, the celebrities they worship, and the media they consume. With social media, a hive mind of thought is created. The popular consensus of the internet, the popular narrative, becomes the baseline of how people should think. It's no longer about seeking truth, it's about aligning your beliefs with the rest of the collective group. These social phenomena aren't necessarily bad on their own, but when consumption overpowers creativity and when the hive mind stifles individual free thought, it is our responsibility as thinking beings to do something. Friedrich Nietzsche describes what he calls the last man, an unthinking being who is driven by the pursuit of pleasure and the desire for comfort. The last man does not question why he lives his life the way he does, nor does he seek to improve and think for himself. Essentially, Nietzsche's last man is what we think of when we describe an NPC. If we truly want to think freely and live authentically, then we must practice self-awareness. The great ancient Greek philosopher Socrates once said, a life without contemplation is not worth living. If we are not aware of our individual biases, prejudices, and preconceived notions, we will be incapable of arriving closer to the truth. If we do not question why we do the things we do, why we think the way we think, we will never be free from the collective hive mind that is constantly imposed on us. Every day we are provided more distractions, more enticing media to watch, better technology to engross ourselves in, entertainment that distracts us from the real issues that affect us. The allegorical matrix is a system filled with unthinking people who will not question the flaws of a corrupt system. The matrix wants people to be numb with pleasure and comfort, too preoccupied to tackle the true issues behind the vast injustices committed by those in positions of power. Although the idea of taking the red pill has been co-opted by scam artists trying to sell workout plans and dating advice, the concept still has a lot of merit. To truly take the red pill is to question what we are told to think, to consume, and to be. To take the red pill is to question the very essence of right and wrong entirely as we see it now. It is important to realize that the most violent human tragedies, genocides, and injustices were justified by most of the population in those societies. Uh, there was once a time when slavery was considered ethical and man was reduced to nothing more than an animal. If people supported evil back then as good, isn't it possible that they're still doing that today? Nietzsche describes three stages in life, that of the camel, the lion, and the child. The camel represents man burdened with preconceived beliefs given to them by the environment around them. Man is initially burdened by societal expectations, the beliefs of the hive mind, and the lifestyle that they are expected to follow. It is up to him to realize the limitations of these beliefs and become the lion. The lion begins to question everything they've been told and attempts to slay the dragon, thou shalt. Essentially, the dragon represents the commonly accepted beliefs of the man's society and popular culture. On each scale of the dragon is a representation of how society expects him to be. Once the man realizes that he does not need to believe anything that he has been expected to believe, he becomes the child. The child looks back on all the beliefs that he has rejected and with a free and clear mind, chooses which beliefs he will incorporate into his life purely based on merit and not because he was told that he must believe it. The child looks at life as a beautiful experience, unburdened by being forced to think or live a certain way. The child, with a free mind, creates his life in his own image, formulates his own set of beliefs, free from societal pressures and expectations. 
he becomes truly free and liberates himself from the constraints of absolute dogmatism and ignorance. To become a free thinker, however, the man had to begin with self-reflection, self-awareness. The man had to look at his life objectively and realize the limits that have been put onto his ability to think. The man had to ask difficult questions and deal with ugly truths. The man had to realize the horror of the world, but in doing so, also discover deeper beauty. The culmination of slaying the dragon, unburdening himself of societal expectations, was the birth of an authentic man, in love with an unlimited life, a life without boundaries or limits, a life that in its doom, in its contradictions, irrationality, violence, love, sublimity, is worth living to the utmost extent. The life of a free thinker. But before slaying the dragon, before escaping the hive mind and discovering the hidden potential within them, the man had to first become self-aware and contemplate his life and contemplate the nature of his own doomed existence. This is The Warrior Philosopher, Building the Foundations of the Warrior Philosophy. We'll see you next time.